Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry building techniques and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. To get the rocket ready for paint, I've gone and sanded everything down and refilled any low spots with the, uh, the wood filler stuff. <laughs> the wood filler stuff. Um, it's kind of liquidy. Um, I didn't have very, you know, big spots, so I didn't, I put some water in it to thin it out so I could just paint it on. Um, I was paying particular attention to these um, seams right here. We remember, we already put epoxy on it. I don't need to put any more epoxy on it. Uh, this stuff sands a lot easier than epoxy, so I recommend the wood filler. Um, so I did that. I did around the, the, uh, the wings and the tail. Um, I did around the nose cone. I did a little bit here on the tip of the nose cone where there's the seams where the plastic comes together. I spent a lot of time trying to even this out around the, uh, the front and the rear part of the canopy um, and then along on the bottoms and on the launch lugs as well. Spent some time um, sanding and sealing and, and filling with the, with the filler. It's worth it. Because um, if you can see it and feel it, it's going to show up through the paint. Um, and so at this point, it's ready for the primer. So I use a sandable primer. Everybody asks me, what brand do I use? I think they're all crap, so I'm not going to recommend anything. Um, in the, the, the notes on YouTube, you can discuss amongst yourselves which is the best that you like to use. Again, like I said, I think they're all, they all stink because um, they, they either gum up the paper or they're too, um, too thin, so they don't really have a high build to them. Um, ideally, you'd like to paint it with the primer and then sand it, um, and the primer acts like a filler and fills in any low spots. Um, that would be perfect. There are some like that. Um, if you go to automotive primers, and you, typically those are a two-part mix, and you have to spray them out of a spray gun. Um, those are the, the better ones, but I don't know what brand they are. Um, you can go down to an auto paint store, and they'll tell you which brand is probably best for you. Um, so at this point, again, it's, it's ready for priming. Um, usually what I do is I'll stick a, you know, something in the back so I can hold it while I'm painting. Um, I'll also take the nose cone and separate it just a little bit because um, you got to get this edge here and that edge there um, and when, you, when you prime it. Um, and then you're going to sand again. Typically, you know, you'll do that once or two times um, to get that nice, really smooth finish that you want. Remember, you want this, this one smooth because of the decals. Uh, we're going to use gloss paint later uh, because the decals like to be on gloss paint, water slide decals on gloss paint. And then afterwards, then you can kind of spray it with a matte coating to give it a nice dull look finish to it. Okay, so it's ready for paint. Um, and, you know, we, we've done a million videos on painting. It's just a matter of, you know, holding it, spraying it, you know, keep the can moving. Don't go in one spot like this, because if you do, you're going to get a run. And that's more sanding. So try to keep it on an even coat. So always keep it moving, keep it rotating while you're putting it on so that what you're painting here, the other side is evaporating away and, and it doesn't run so bad. It, um, the first time through, you might get some runs, but then the second time, you're going to pay more attention because, you know, that's the way it goes. All right, so I am going to do this outdoors, not indoors, sandable primer. Um, and then after that, after sanding it, then we'll put on the final black paint. At this point, my rocket is ready for the paint. I'm going to put black glossy paint all over the entire rocket. That's the easy part. But to get to this point, it took a lot of effort. And I wanted to show you some photographs that I took along the way during the process of painting this rocket to get it to this state. So here is the rocket after the first coat of primer. 
Now what happens when you put on a primer is that you start seeing the blemishes. Look for anything that you can feel with your finger like rubbing across it or that cast a shadow on the rocket because this indicates a high point that needs to be sanded off. On my particular rocket I had like four or five different problem areas. The first was the gap between the fin panels on the vertical tail. What happened was that these panels weren't glued together properly and you can actually see a little gap and this is going to need to be filled. And on the nose cone I didn't like the base of the, of the canopy where it met the nose cone. It's not bad but you can see a color change indicating a high spot and I wanted to get that nice and smooth make it kind of organic looking. The edge of the fairings that's always going to be a big issue and on mine they weren't perfectly conforming so I can see some of the shadows again this indicates a high spot that needs to be sanded off. On my vertical tail on the back side there are some low areas where the interlocking tabs don't exactly meet the surface so these need to be filled with some putty or some filler putty um, so that it's a nice flat surface back there. And on the bottom vertical tail there's a small divot in the fillet where it meets the tube and again I want to fill this and make it look nice. So I went ahead and sanded down the rocket and you can see here that I took off approximately 80% of all the primer that I put on. Uh, going back to my problem areas we can see the fairing edge on the cockpit. The fillet of paint is more apparent now because I've sanded down to the raw plastic on the nose cone and you can actually see that where the paint is actually filling in that low spot. The fairing along the sides of the, the tube look a lot better. Um, you can also see how the paint has filled in the spirals on the tube. Here's another photo of the fairing edge. Um, you can see kind of a wavy appearance uh, where again this means that the paint is filling in those low spots uh, that were in actually in the filler that I had put in there on, along that fairing edge. On the back vertical tail I used automotive spot filler putty. You could have used regular carpenter's wood filler. This would have been the same. There was no reason that I chose this red stuff. It's just that I it's something that I just grabbed really quick. It's, again it's it's a personal choice of yours whether if you want to use this red stuff or if you want to use the carpenter's wood filler. You've, you've, if you've already got the carpenter's wood filler use it. It sands really nice and it'll, it'll do the exact same job. And the gap here between the panels on the vertical tail I went ahead and filled that with thick super glue. Um, I laid it in there and then I had to sand it nice and flat again. But because this is vertical tail it needs to be a structural component that's why I chose the the super glue over the carpenter's wood filler at this point. Although I probably could have got away with again the carpenter's wood filler but I chose to go a little bit stronger. Okay so here I've reprimed the rocket after all that sanding and then I sanded it again with wet dry sandpaper. Um, as you can see it's got a nice smooth appearance. Um, now my canopy nose is really blended into the nose cone. You can barely see where that the two plastic pieces actually met. The gap between the panels on the vertical tail is now gone. It's painted. It looks really nice. The joint on the fairing is really smooth and it's organically blended into the tube. You can't even tell where the tube and the fairing actually meet. It's so organic. Now here's more views of the joint where the vacuform pieces mate to the tube. Again it's looking really good. The divot in the fillet on the bottom of the vertical tail is now gone. I've sanded that away, filled it and sanded it away. The dovetail joint on the wing is totally invisible now so the wing is nice and flat and it's ready for the decal. Um, the back panel of the vertical tail is now flush over the entire surface thanks to both the filler putty and the, the new coat of 
the primer. And then finally, you know, as you're doing this, there's always more sanding you can do. Here's a little blemish that I found afterwards right near the launch lug on the base of the rocket. Um, you can tell just because of the color change in the primer where it's sanded nice and smooth, it's a little bit lighter color. And the low spot where the, the primer wasn't sanded because it is a low spot, it's a little darker in color. So at this point, I'm going to wipe down the entire surface to get off any of the last of the residue of the sanding process. I want to get it nice and clean um, so that the paint goes down and it doesn't leave any uh, like gravelly looking surface because there's loose dust on it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and paint it flat or oh, I'm sorry, we're going to paint it gloss black. And the reason for that is because the decals like gloss paint to stick to. It's a nice smoother surface. Um, even dull paint, um, there's like little tiny ups and down little valleys, just kind of like sandpaper. And just, just imagine the decal trying to stick to a piece of sandpaper. It's just not going to work. You want it glass smooth. And that's why we're going to use gloss paint here. And then after the decals are applied, then we can put on a dull coat to protect them and to change the surface finish from gloss to flat again. So the next time we see it, we're going to be gloss black.